and of course, uh, Professor Suhal, Lutasi uh, Pagus, and Dr. Irrawaddy here. Uh, thank you very much to all of you. And thank you, uh, Joe Hatsima, for uh, uh, providing a provocative discussion. I'm going to come to some of the lessons that I think we might draw from your comments uh, in just a moment. Uh, but I wanted also to thank our partners from CRDF Global. Uh, for being such a such terrific partners for the GIST initiative. Uh, and before I respond a little bit to uh, Dr. Hatima's remarks, I wanted to say why the United States government? Why would the United States <coughs> government be active in entrepreneurship in Indonesia? Well, in 2009, President Obama Called, uh, called in Cairo for strengthened international relationships through partnerships to address important global challenges. Basically what he was saying is anything complicated, you can only do through partnerships. The United States can't dictate to anybody in today's world uh, what approach to take, but we can develop productive partnerships that benefit both the United States uh, and our partners. So just, focuses on three key areas that help young entrepreneurial scientists and innovators to use their talents to promote economic growth. It focuses on networking, on skill development, and on financing. This is part of the comprehensive partnership that our two presidents uh, formally launched in November 2010 uh, here in Jakarta. Uh, entrepreneurship is part of that partnership. Education, Dr. Chaputra is also a big champion uh, of educational exchange. Uh, and science and technological cooperation are key elements of that comprehensive partnership. Now, techno uh, technological innovation is a very important step towards addressing some of the, the challenges that I mentioned. That you can only resolve through partnership. Challenges such as sustainable economic growth, low cost renewable energy, and food and water security. GIST, as one of the programs in our partnership, aims to connect innovators across sectors and borders with the financial resources they need to develop new products and companies in these vital areas. We accomplished this goal through 20 regional and country partners and a 23,000 member community online. There's an ongoing business plan competition, the GIST iDARE competition. It includes three Indonesian startups among the 20 regional semifinalists. And bear with me, I just want to tell you what innovative startups uh, it, this includes. Because Dr. Hatima says entrepreneurship is part of MIT's DNA. I would argue that it's part of Indonesia's DNA as well. So some of these some of these ideas are uh, or some of these startups are such as Susu Listri. It's an innovative milk pasteurizer device. Another is Dwarapala, an e-commerce business helping offline retailers increase their sales channels by getting on the internet. And some of our guests may not know that Indonesia is number two in Facebook and number one in Twitter for all of Asia. Number two in the world. The third startup is Rati Maya, which is fashion designers selling their products online across Indonesia. You only have to look at the, the batik around the table, I wish I were wearing it, to see that there's a lot of uh, creative innovation in Indonesia, including in the fashion industry. In, in all, over 100 select entrepreneurs will participate in two-day GIST boot camp event. I, I think these entrepreneurs are role models for future inventors. They're innovative thinkers, they take risks, they, they're passionate about putting their ideas into reality. They create jobs and prosperity along the way. Now as part of this, this startup boot camp, the top six companies will receive ongoing mentorship thanks to support from the World Bank. And the winner at the end of this will be brought to the United States this fall to meet with potential investors and to learn about entrepreneurship in America. Now, GIST is only one initiative 
of the U.S. government to, to help build the entrepreneurial ecosystem here in Indonesia. Uh, we've also supported GEPI, the Global Entrepreneurship Program in Indonesia, and I'm happy to see its executive director, Mark Wang, is here today. And GEPI helps entrepreneurs through an angel investor network, through an incubator, and through other initiatives. We've partnered with Goldman, Goldman Sachs in the 10,000 Women Initiative to send nine successful women entrepreneurs from Indonesia to study a specialized business management program in the United States. And in a few weeks, John May of the Angel Research Institute will return to Indonesia to assist YEPI in starting up an angel investor network. Once it's fully operational, this will provide critical funding to startup entrepreneurs. And we've already have, we have plans in place to connect the top entrepreneurs trained through the GIST bootcamp with this angel network investor at YEPI. So I'm excited to be part of all of these, these initiatives. Uh, I wanted, I had to comment, I, I studied at, at Harvard just a few blocks away from, from MIT, and I had to comment on a few of the, the uh, very interesting points that uh, Dr. Hatsima made. Uh, first of all, one of his early lessons is that successful entrepreneurs want to give back. You don't have to look very far to see an example of that. But I would also add, there are people like Sandy Bruno, and Noke Saroy, and Shinta Kamdani, Kutra Samperna, uh, other successful entrepreneurs in Indonesia uh, who are determined to give back and to make it possible for other um, entrepreneurs to succeed. They are role models. They are people who, can sh who show how it can be done. Uh, Dr. Hatsuma made an important point about failure. He said, uh, failure is problems yet to be solved. Well, I think government can learn from the example of entrepreneurs in this area. For, for government, it's very hard for governments to acknowledge failure, but very often that's what's needed to go ahead and try those other uh, opportunities. And governments have to be more innovative and learn that some things work and some things don't, and you, and you shouldn't be afraid to, uh, to have two failures for every one success. So I think that's a very valuable lesson in this partnership. Also, he pointed out that uh, money flows where opportunity exists, and I would say that's very true in Indonesia. Uh, I had a, uh, the great pleasure of meeting with the leaders of the uh, National Innovation Council at the Ambassador's Residence, not last year, uh, just, just last year. And they were quite impressed with the Cambridge Innovation Center, which Dr. Hatsuma described. Uh, I think it's not doesn't take much of a stretch of the imagination to imagine uh, a successful incubators, accelerators uh, in Indonesia, such as as this Cambridge Innovation Center. One anecdote to bear with me: in our embassy, because we we think that innovation can be good in government too. We we had a, a contest. Uh, great ideas contest. What's a, what are some great ideas for improving the relations with Indonesia and for improving the way we run our, our mission? Uh, and there were 106 entries just like that of great ideas for this competition. And uh, they, these were about 40% of them were in the, from Indonesian employees, about 60% uh, no, from Indonesian employees, and about 40% were, were from American employees. We had cash prizes, because great ideas deserve to, to, to be rewarded, we believe. And the top two who won the big cash prizes were Indonesians. They came up with great ideas, they, uh, they thought through their ideas, they argued successfully, and they beat the Americans uh, in that contest. Now, I don't know that that will always be the case, uh, but I can tell you that competitions, uh, contests, tend to be very exciting and effective in this country. So I think there are a lot of lessons from uh, what Dr. Hudson has said that are uh, quite applicable to a country in which entrepreneurship is in its DNA. So thank you very much for giving me uh, an opportunity.